Hello everyone, I am Steve from Mac84 and welcome to another Mac84, another Mac84 live stream. How's everyone doing today? It's a Wednesday, my camera's tilted, what else is new? Um, <laughs> yes you do, <laughs> yes you do Adam. Let's say hello to all the fine people who joined us this morning. We have Jay from the House of Moth, we have Brandon, we have Trina, we have Julian, we have Elwo Brokeek, I, I don't know, sorry. Carthor, Eric, uh, BBS, sick, kind of, maybe, uh, Kate, McIntosh Librarian, Apple's Anonymous, whoops, chat jumped there, it always does that when I scroll things. Dysfunctional Wombat, hello, it's been a while, Adam McGee is here, of course. And the Garth Beagle is here. Zodium, hey! 8 a.m. for you. Well, <laughs> if it was 8 a.m., I'd still be asleep. Uh, Farouk is here. Uh, Tom Barber is here. Mark is here. Wolfman's here. Trina's here. All right, cool. So, a uh, bit of a, a different schedule today. <clears throat> I have uh, interviews and inter interview-related things to do all throughout the afternoon. So I have an extremely tight window here. I will be signing off around 1.30-ish, 1.40-ish, uh, when I have to jump off for a, a call, and then uh, sometime after that, I'm going to be doing some other thing that'll tie me up for like a few days. Uh, so, this is probably all you're going to see from me for a little bit, uh, so sorry, but that's just how life is. Um, so, have a few things I want to get to uh, before we get started. First of all, you can see some lovely IMAX behind me. Uh, if you did not check out the iMac video, the $5 iMac video that uh, I released the other day, um, that is one of them, the one on the left. The, the one on the right is a, is a G5 one that Mike Stanhope gave me, uh, Mike's Mac Shack. Oh, thank you, Trina. Thank you, Mark. I, fingers crossed. Um, and so the $5 iMac is the one on the left. That's the spoiler alert. If you didn't see that video, cover your ears until I wave my hand again. That's an Intel model. And then this one over here is a G5. So that video and the iMac G4 video got a big response, a lot bigger than I was expecting. So um, I asked in the first video if anybody would like to see me do uh, like a task that I could do across a few generations of iMac and do a test. And so that test was video editing. You know, use iMovie, use a DV camcorder because a G3 iMac could do DV uh, video editing really quick, really isn't you know, uh, it's too slow on that and until you export the project. But anyway, I'd love to set up a G3 iMac, a iMac G4, then an Intel iMac and an iMac G5 and just do like a similar project across all the machines just to see how it works because there are so many videos on YouTube where like someone will be like, let's try and edit video on this old Mac. And it's like they're shoving 720p or 1080p or 4K footage onto like a G3. And they're like, it's so slow. Why does it do this? It's like, yeah, it's not meant to do that. Um, but if you're using appropriate codecs like DV, even though the files take up a huge amount of space, that's what was appropriate at the time for most users. So uh, I think that uh, is going to be what I do next with that. Uh, I do have uh, some logic boards from Clint of LGR that I will be working on probably next week. Um, so I'll be making like a big event out of that because that's exciting. Uh, three logic boards uh, that they sent over for me to uh, go ahead and edit. Uh, edit. See, I'm reading the chat as I'm talking to you. That's bad. Uh, go ahead and fix. Uh, so they, they all work, um, but, you know, just some preventative maintenance. And uh, a few other projects that I'm working on. The Mac Studio, like video i don't i'm not calling it a review but I'm, I'm doing a video where i want to talk about my experience with it compared to my other machine and all this stuff so um that video will come out when i hear back from apple support about an issue because that will kind of skew my whole experience hmm, just saying that uh i was just wondering where you shoot your polished not live videos i had gotten so used to the live stream of the creative uh mess yeah well that's the background of those videos, you see? And when I'm not shooting the videos, all this crap gets put on those shelves. So the camera sits like where my fist is here. And then and you actually see the camera right there. And broop, there you go. That's that's how that works. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the, the whole area. Um, it's a little cramped, but I have to clean up more and then it'll be less cramped. Um, do, 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 do video editing with your Power Mac AV card. Excellent. 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 And Garth has a bunch of VHS tape and DV you need to edit. 
Just put them on a Blu-ray and worry about it later. <laughs> Picked up a 700 megahertz iMac uh, Special Edition G3. Sadly, CRT displays white and gray lines. It does bong on startup. Any ideas? I know these iMacs are rare. I wouldn't say the iMac is rare. They made a ton of those models. The 700 megahertz one may be more desirable than others. What is not rare is that machine having analog board and uh, CRT issues. I would go on to tinkerdifferent.com, tinkerdifferent.com, uh, the web forum. A lot of smart people on there. Maybe you can get a replacement part or something like that. But no, Tom, they have not. They have not. Anyway, multi-purpose basement. The heck yeah. And the other side is where the bunnies live. So that's I can't even go over there without giving them treats. Okay, so let's let's get on to what we were doing today. We'll be here for like ever. Um, I did get a lovely package uh, from a viewer. I don't think they're signed in uh, on the chat today. But uh, I want to I want to give them thanks. Thank you, Trina. And I want to uh, read a little note. Uh, this is from Charkez. And Charkez says, Steve, enjoy this color quick cam. I've also included some 3D printed goodies and a bit of sticky tack so you can put them where you'd like. Thanks for the content, live streams, Discord, and other contributions you make the vintage, uh, you make to the vintage Macintosh hobby. Onward to 10,000. Well, I just reached 10,000 subscribers. Thank you to everybody, and thank you, Charkes, for the lovely letter. I did take a peek at what's inside here, and it's so cool. So I want to share it with you guys. Um, first off, we have some 3D printed lovely things here, and these are so cool. When I opened the package, I didn't know what to expect. I was freaking out. Look at look at these look at these beautiful 3d printed things we have a floppy disk we have a trash can we have a system folder oh these are just so cool so i'm gonna probably either put some sticky tech on them that he included or little magnets and i will put them like uh i have little uh, pins and badges and stuff on this pole i might put them there or something like that but i think these are so cool just look just look at that they have a little bit of a raised edge to them you might be able to kind of see that I know, so I'm gonna I'm gonna contact him and find out uh, if these files are available or if he sells them or whatever because I think these are really cool and uh, I I was geeking out when I saw them like oh so cool uh, so these are really really cool thank you Charkas uh, that wasn't the only thing that uh, they included this is really neat this is quite intricate too but look at that that's the Newton logo for those of you who aren't familiar with it and there's a three colors on this thing so this is quite intricate. Well, look at that. That is beautiful. That is so cool. So I need to I need to find a good places to put this stuff, especially if I do any Newton videos to do that. Yeah, I think Susan Care would get a kick out of that. Somebody should 3D print stuff and send it to her. Um, but yeah, that is that is so cool. Sorry, my fat fingers are in the way. But look at that. That is just awesome. And then we have, of course, the Newton logo, which just look at that beautiful logo. I just love it. I love everything about the Newton. So thank you very much, Tarkas, for that. And uh, there is a non-3D printed item in here. And that's something I've been looking for for quite some time. This is a color quick cam by Connectix. And uh, yeah, Tom, I bought one of those prints. I have yet to hang it up, but they're beautiful quality. And uh, so this quick cam is color. I do have uh, one or two black and white ones in the original box because at an old office, they were just going to throw them away. And I'm like, uh, yoink. Uh, and they were the Macintosh versions. And uh, so this is interesting. It has a serial cable, but then to power it, so I guess you needed more power for color, you had an ADB pass-through. So you get the steal the five volts out of the ADB port or whatever. Um, I went for one that uh, it's black and white, and it has all the A to Z icons with because there's a little rabbit in there. And it's black and white, and it, I forget what the size is, but it's a print like that. It's like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but like they're all little icons. Uh, so I thought that was really neat. Um, and I have the frame for it. I just haven't put it up. I was thinking of putting it up somewhere here, but there's there's no wall space except behind this monitor. So we'll see. Um, and it was a close call because she does have a color one of that, which is so cool. But I can recommend, highly recommend. There's a book that she made. I think it's just called Icons. I did a giveaway for my 1,000 subscriber giveaway because I accidentally ended up with two books somehow. Wait, did I disclose that before? Never mind. I bought a second one to sell giveaway. Anyway, uh, if you go to uh, Susan Care Prints or Care Prints or something like that, uh, if you do a Google search, you'll find it. Uh, she does have a lovely book uh, that's for sale, and she signs them, which is, like, really cool. So anyway, Color Quick Cam. I've been after one of these for a while. Um, the black and white one I have needs recapping. I bought the caps for it, and I, I don't know any of where this went. Um, so it's somewhere in the house, maybe. 
And uh, so the color one is really cool. Yes, Adam, we will video chat if I get this working. So very, very cool. Thank you very much, Charkez, for the goodies. I really, 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 really appreciate it. You did not have to send me such cool 3D printed stuff or the quick cam either, but my goodness, thank you. That is very, very kind of you. And uh, I, I wish you all the best in your retro tinkering because I think we all need some good luck with that from now and again. Okay, so it's 11.07 here. As I said, I'm on a pretty tight schedule. So let's uh, take a look at where I put that board here. And so I'm glad Adam is here because I'll probably have some questions for you, sir. Um, yeah, so this is the third Macintosh 2X board. Now, if you did not see our previous live streams, I will forgive you for not watching the six and a half hour long one. Um, but essentially... Adam sent me three Mac 2X boards, and the first one wasn't too difficult. The second one really was like, oh, that was a six and a half hour stream. That took forever. But I knew what I was getting into with that because the traces just looked awful. Now this one, um, it doesn't look too bad. There is a lifted pad here or there. And Adam, refresh my memory, you said this thing did not boot at all when you tried it, correct? Uh, I do see some, uh, you know, nasty bits of corrosion here and there. Um, but overall, I'm not seeing the horrendous traces like we had on the other machine, which is good. Uh, Vic, the Victor says, I just got an iMac G3 Indigo with the slot loading drive. The CD drive isn't too happy to eject. Is there an easy way to change the bands of the drives and the mechanism? I do not have that specific information, Vic, the Victor, Vic Carr, or however you pronounce it. I'm sorry. Um, but there's plenty of people out there on Reddit, on TinkerDifferent.com, etc., who have experienced that issue. It's a common failure. Either you replace the drive or you replace the mechanism or you, you put a new belt in there. I haven't gone through that personally, but uh, maybe someone on tinkerdifferent.com, that's a form, uh, can help you out there. I did a few caps on this board and then stopped. My cap work is atrocious. Well, we will be the judge of that. No. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at this under the microscope and see what we're doing, how we're doing, what do, I don't know, where am I? What was it, Wednesday? Um, and we'll go from there. So, sorry, Adam, we are going to take a close inspection on your work, but do not fear. We do not judge around here. If you are trying to get these machines up and running more power to you, everyone starts somewhere. You don't want to see my first soldering job. It was terrible. And uh, let me untangle my soldering iron cable. So I do not kill myself and I'll grab my Amtech flux, which Bruce of Rankers creations just did a second video about, which is pretty darn good so apparently there's some been some silliness with the formulas and uh yeah he was doing some content about that which is really cool so go check that out uh <laughs> let the judging begins oh boy okay so uh let's just have a quick look around then we'll get to poking and prodding and stuff like that um I'm just looking for anything around these capacitors that looks terrible we will we will check all the traces around those um, but just going to take a quick tour around the board here. Here's a little solder ball there, but that doesn't look too terrible. A little solder ball there, but uh, yeah, might be might be a break there. Who knows? We'll come back to that. And that seems to be okay. Let's see what else we could take a look at. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay. That's a break right there. So C9, that's a clean break. So we will have to fix it up. There's some corrosion here. You have to clean that up too. You have a nice little solder ball friend up there. And moving right along, looking at all the startup circuitry fun. You seem to be okay. Yeah, here we have some, what appear to be breaks or just a little piece of corrosion. So we'll fix that. Adam, don't apologize. You sent this to me to be fixed. Don't, don't worry. All right, so yeah, this, as expected, this this cap loves to cause a mess. So this chip is just bleh. Uh, we'll clean that up. Um, doesn't look like the traces are too bad around here, to be honest. But we'll see. Um, yeah, I could use some cleanup. There's another break here. I'm going to scrape that away because that was a little hard to see. much easier to see copper okay I think that's actually making a connection but either way it's good to note that there's a lot of green on this chip my goodness all around here it's a lot of green 
have some solder balls here. So clean that up. This looks pretty nasty. Yes, that will have to be tidied up. These traces don't look too hot here either. But some of them may miraculously be making a connection. So we will take a closer look at those. But just scraping them to remind me. Um, this area is always interesting. Yeah, I don't know if those are making the connection or this. So we could we could fix that up there. And this was a pad that was lifted. But that actually seems like it might be secure. So if I can, I will keep the original caps on there. Because if there's nothing wrong with them, why waste them? Tantalum is not a, a uh, resource that is plentifully available these days. So... Okay, well, I think that's all that we uh, did a tour around. So let's go ahead and tidy some of these things up here. Like Thor landed in the yard. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Flux gay. <laughs> yeah, Bruce's video is pretty good. I had to clean my microscope. I, I apologize. Everything gets a little bit of a, a halo wish sun beam type quality to it. I know if this was Jay's microscope, it would drive nuts. But it's mine, and, I, and it's like, whatever. Um, I will clean it when I can. Speaking of flux, my flux applicator is broken, so I'm using, like, a screwdriver. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? All right, so let's get our fan here to blow all the lovely chemicals slightly off camera. Um, and I see you're getting some good advice about the iMac... Uh, Slot load uh, thing, so that's good. Thing, optical drive. Right, so we're just going to tidy up these joints here just to make sure they're actually touching. Some of them looked a little thin. Better safe than sorry. And the flux will allow us to uh, clean up these things a little bit. Especially these little solder balls and things like that. Oh, you can't see this. I apologize. My viewport is different than what the camera is. So the physical viewport on my microscope is very different from what the camera does. So what I'm doing is I'm heating up both sides and just applying a little bit of pressure because this capacitor was leaning uh, quite a bit. <clears throat> so I'm just uh, applying a wee, wee bit of pressure, heating up both sides. So now that is, is pretty much flat, which is good. That we, you know, it's a, a cosmetic thing, but you know what? If we could make it look a little pretty, make it look a little pretty. Hey, Insanely Digital, I think uh, you're a new face around here. Welcome. Join the party. Have fun. We have a Macintosh 2X here that we're looking at from my friend Adam. He's in the chat. Uh, he did a attempt to get this working, and he needs some help, so we're helping him out. We're going to review all the work he did, make sure everything is making good connections and all that fun stuff, because we want to get these machines up and running again. Uh, Adam, did you use leaded solder or uh, non-leaded solder? It seems like you use leaded, which is good, because uh, otherwise I think I'd be having more trouble. There's some green here. Nothing too terrible, though. That might be a, a thing to look at. Adam's apples. That's right. That's right. Yep. So Adam did launch his own channel, Adam's Apples. Brand new. Suggest you subscribe to it if you like old apples and Mac stuff. <clears throat> leaded. Okay, great. Thank you, Adam. Boop, 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 boop. No worries, nerds. McGee, hope you feel better soon. And I hope that uh, all my many, 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 many hours of old live streams will keep you company. Okay, so it looks like we got uh, most of those solder balls and junk sorted here. So that's good. Everything seems like it's going to. It's making a good connection. We'll come back with the multimeter, but. On a visual inspection, that looks okay. We're just going to do some light scraping here. 
just to make sure. Uh, this is always a fun one. Adam, if you got this to stick there, well done. That's a pain in the butt one, I can tell you. I'm just going to uh, alleviate that little blob there so it's not as blobby. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just, you know, to be cleaned up just a little bit and while I'm here. Might as well, huh? Yeah, and that wasn't really making a connection now, was it? That's okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to move you out of here. I'm going to freshen this up here. Because sometimes you'll have a good anchor on one pad, and it makes you think, like, oh, I got everything connected. But in truth, it's not, and you run into problems. So what I will probably do in this sense, I will use a smaller capacitor. And this is a great example of showing you the size difference between capacitors you can get. Because when I first started, uh, it was sort of driving me crazy, because these capacitors, because sometimes they're too way, way too big, way too big. So let me bring a capacitor out from this little plastic bag, and I will show you an example. Oh, thank you, Kate. Excellent, and Adam got another step. So here, let me show you the difference between the capacitor sizes. Look at this. We got this bad boy here, and then we have this one, this little tiny one. Now, which one is better to work with when you're in a very, very con constrained area with plastic right up against it? The small one. This fits much easier right there. Look how much more space you have. Where with this one, you can see especially where the pads are, you'd have to get pretty darn close. So we're not even going to bother with that. We're going to use the smaller one. And on this board, the smaller one isn't too uh, much needed uh, elsewhere. But in this particular scenario, with this particular uh, capacitor, we're going to end up using it here. Because that is, that is going to save us a lot of time and a lot of frustration of going, Why won't it go in there? Ah. We're just going to put some flux on there. And we're going to move this here. Now, the, the stripe on these tantalum capacitors point towards positive. And so you can see the little positive mark there on the logic board there. Right, and I have flux all over my tweezers, but I don't think the board will mark. So what I like to do with these is I like to do the hard part first. So I'm going to try and do this. I'm at an angle here, which is not always the best, really. Uh, make sure you guys can see that. There we go. And so I'm going to do my best and just... Whoopsies. Yeah, let's see. If uh, I put the cap at an angle here, I'm going to get some funny business. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out the solder. Away from, we're going to clean this up first because those pads have a lot of solder on them, which is normally like not the end of the world, but I want to make sure this is even and flat. So we're going to have our solder wick here. That's going to take all the solder off the pads. Fresh, clean start here. Whoopsie. And you do not want to do that. You do not want to pull these pads. They are very, very fragile. and can be very brittle. This one's sort of on its way out here. But once we uh, tack that capacitor on there, and uh, that solder is bridged to here, that should be enough to keep it in place. We should not have to worry about it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my board, and I'm going to situate it in a little bit easier position for me. I know, Rich. I have uh, interviews and junk later, so I can't, I can't, I can't uh, stream later today. So I figured, you know what? Let's just do it now. Why not? Okay. So uh, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna position everything this way. Hey, Scarlet Swordfish, and hello, every anybody else, uh, Aaron and uh, Rich. Anybody I missed? Uh, my apologies. I've been sort of head down, talking up a storm. But thank you very much for joining. Greatly appreciate it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put the capacitor there. Put a little solder on our iron. We're going to try not to melt any plastic. I say try because nobody's perfect. There we go. Then we're just going to hold it in place so we don't wiggle it too much. And I'm going to put a little more solder on here just because this trace is a little bit weak. And that way we have a little bit of strength going there. So that should be fine. What I like to do sometimes when I'm soldering these caps that are very, very particular and might not be on correctly, I just like to give them a little bit of a poke, a little bit of a nudge. 
that's not going anywhere. Happy to move forward. Well, thank you very much, Garth. Thank you very much, Addy. Greatly appreciate that. And thank you, Rich, and everybody else who's saying good luck. Um, yeah, exactly. The, the people who designed the capacitor right around the RAM slot, I mean, look, they they were saying, well, the machine's going to do it. Who cares? But, you know, <laughs> we are we are now custodians of these machines. And, yeah, not fun. So just put some flux there, some flux there, because we're going to tidy these up a little bit. Yes, I'm using a screwdriver as an applicator because my flux syringe went... And so all the flux is stuck inside. Um, are those caps on correct? Yes. Um, you have the uh, the stripe facing the plus. So that is accurate as far as if that's what you're referring to. Um, I'm just going to tidy these up a little bit because there were some solder balls that I could see. A little bit more on the edge there. You mean the part itself? Yes, 47 microfarad, 16 volt. And this is also a, whoopsie, 4716. I will bring up the excellent recapping guide that my friend Bruce Rain of Brankus Creations has. You go to recapamac.com, find out all about those recapping guides. And if I go to resources here on his website, if my browser wants to cooperate here, which sometimes it doesn't, I have to do a refresh, um, you will see all of the, uh, the guides to this lovely website. And why is it not working? I can't click on anything. Let's see. Let's, yeah, we're going to check that in a moment with the multimeter. I just have to open up another browser because for some reason <laughs> I can't go to Bruce's website. What is going on? What's going on? It loads, but then I can't click on anything. There we go. All right, so this is a Macintosh 2X. And so the Macintosh 2X board has 15 47 microfarad 16 volt capacitors and one 10 microfarad 16 volt. And then the axials, which is one 220 uh, 16 volt and then a three 470 microfarad 16 volt. So uh, not, uh, not, not anything too crazy, but uh, yeah, we're going to make sure this is not doing anything incorrect. So um, we were concerned about this. Uh, <laughs> the left might be shorted. Seems to be pushing to the plus side pretty far. Well, I will say that uh, this trace here. Sorry, you can't. See, this board is massive, so it's hitting up against the base of my microscope. Um, there's a line that runs under here, which appears to be covered. But the part where you would solder ends about here. And there so I would not envision there being any problems here um, this is just a design here there's no trace is running on this part of the little box here uh, we will do a continuity test and all this fun stuff but I believe this looks okay um, and this one I believe this stripe goes to that pad too so this would be okay um, but we'll double check everything before we power anything on I'm just looking for any uh, problems that stand out to me right away that we have to address and one of those is right here <clears throat> what's the original equivalent of a refresh command r would be a refresh uh, on a web browser on a macintosh command r that's the apple logo and r sorry i'm just trying to arrange this now this this looks like it might just be fine yeah that that is not fine there which is part of the startup circuit Adam, did you ever try and power this on? I mean, that's barely holding itself together. But I, I forgot what you said. I think you said you, you didn't finish it, so I don't know if that, if uh, you bothered to, to turn it on or not. Or, or what? But. Command Q. Don't listen to Jay. Don't listen to Jay. He's a silly, silly man. Just doing a quick and dirty fix there. And got a chime. Okay. 
Well, that's good. So just doing a quick and dirty fix here. We will get the multimeter out to test and probe things in a moment. I'm just going along here to see if I think see anything terrible. And then go from there. So we do have some lovely areas here. That appear to be okay. I'm scraping away the solder mask, which is this little layer on the board here to reveal the copper to make sure that these traces are going where they should. Because if not, we have to correct it. We have to, you know, some gunk on there. We have to bridge a connection or fix something so it's going where it's supposed to. Yes, these little bits will all be covered with solder mask later. The reason I do not do this and why you should not do this before you know everything works is because once you put solder mask on there, you got to get it off if you made a problem and you, you can't really see what's going on under there if you've all sealed that up and assumed, oh, no, it's fine. Uh, and guess guess how I learned that. Yeah, I made some made some doozies in my day. So, yeah, but that's, that's why I'm not putting any solder mask on it. This board will remain ugly and yucky until we can confirm everything is fine and then we can work on tidying it up. So again, this cap is a little bit crooked, but that's okay. We're just going to heat up both sides and slowly force this down. You have to do this very carefully because you can easily rip something off of the pad or stress out the other pad because it is adhered with solder. So I am doing this very gingerly. Yes, it's just a cosmetic thing. This was probably placed fine, but I'm one of those people where I'll look at it and be like, oh, it's sitting up. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. And we freshened up the joints there just in case the solder needed any freshening up, but that looks to be okay. Not seeing any problems with that. Uh, this seems to be in the correct orientation. It's the correct capacity and everything. Oh, you jump started it. Okay. We cover those bits. So I saw a classic on eBay with you. Hey, Charkas, we just opened up your, your goodie bag before, before this stream. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your 3d printed stuff is really cool. People were asking where to get some. So if you have a little Etsy store set up or something like that, or if you have the 3D printed files to make available to somebody, uh, feel free to, uh, I'll make you a moderator temporarily, temporarily, temporarily. Uh, so you could post that in the chat here. There we go. So Charkas, you can now post links if you'd like. Um, Sam Mac 36 you okay? What's up? You did that little slanty thing and made me feel bad. Oh, the capacitor slanty? Is that the joke you were making? Um, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. You may start a story. It's just been some fun. Well, there you go. There you go. Um, I saw a classic on eBay with the original travel bag. Bunch of software. $150 buy now. Info describes a massive battery explosion inside. Ooh, yeah, no thanks. Uh, junk had even leaked out of the corner of the case. Sounds like the inside is totally trash. Probably, but... With the Macintosh Classic recreated board by Kai Robinson, you might be able to save that with about four or five days of intense soldering work. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's the caveat there. There's a lot of work involved, but it's possible. Anything is possible. All right, so that doesn't look too bad. We're going to move on and uh, take a look at this guy. It looks okay. Just gonna tidy up the solder here, and uh, it's not that I doubt Adam's abilities at all, but it does not hurt to put fresh solder on these while I have my eyes on it to make sure nothing is wiggling around or doing anything it shouldn't. Yeah, I think you should pass on that classic too. Look, if it was fifty bucks, sure, I'll do that deal any day of the week. Cause of, cause of the accessories, not because of the board. The board ain't worth that. <clears throat> but, you know, $150? <clears throat> I lost my voice for a second. Um, yeah, no thank you. That's not a good deal at all. No, okay, that's a little bit better than it was before. A little bit of a solder ball. There we go. I like those Mac bags. Yeah, I have one for the 128K... 512k and then I have one for I believe it was designed for the Mac SE or the Mac Plus they're all the same size but uh, I have a matching one with the image writer too 
the same color and because Ken of the computer clan had one and so after he had one I put a safe search up on eBay and a few weeks later I saw it and I'm like no nah! and I had to buy it so I, it's all Ken's fault oh this is gonna be fun so this one's a little bit rough let's just say um, but that's probably just because of all the gunk and stuff in that area. So what we will be doing is cleaning that up just a wee bit. Make sure this is actually pressing down here. Because the, the problem is if these caps have uh, dirty pads, it can be very hard to get the solder to stick. And that's what I'm going to assume happened here with Adam. He was trying to solder them, and the pads were dirty, and they weren't uh, really sticking, so he had to put a glob of solder on them, or he had to sort of you know, lay them, or uh, have them raised a little bit. Because that, that happens. It's very, very easy to have that happen. And the uh, trick to try and uh, alleviating that is to use some uh, solder wick to really clean the heck out of those pads. And it seems like, you know, you're going backwards because you're putting solder wick on the board to soak up the solder, then you're putting fresh solder on, then you're doing it again. But, I mean, that's that sort of rinse and repeat is sort of required for these things. You just bought 10 broken MacBook Pros for 100 bucks. Well, those are, I think, the ones that have the graphics card problems. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so good luck there, buddy. Uh, Chris sent me a jazz drive. Adam, I messaged him about the jazz drive like two seconds after you did. Because I wanted the boxed one to show off in a video. So I'm very envious of you, sir. But good haul. Good haul. Because um, I have a boxed zip drive. I have a boxed ditto drive. That was their tape drive. I do not have a boxed jazz drive. Not that I need it. But Adam, maybe if you take some nice pretty photos of it, I could use that in my videos instead of going out and spending money I shouldn't. Okay, so here we have more trace breaks. So we'll have to fix these. Because that definitely looks like a break to me. Which is to be expected around these capacitors. They leak. They cause corrosion, corrosive damage. Ooh, look at this one. Yeah, that's... That's pretty nasty. Yeah, that's, that's going to be fun. So we want to scrape away so we could test it with the multimeter. Wait, did I say no? The Ditto drive. Um, I I think I have the I have the Click cartridges. I think I think I may be confusing it with some other piece of crap I have. Um, but LGR did a fun video about that. I'm trying to figure out what to do with my new 12-inch PowerBook G4. It's a great typing machine. <laughs> you might just you might have a bunch of good parts though. Don't 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 worry there, uh, Carthor. Alright, so this cap doesn't look too terrible. I'm just going to freshen that up just a wee bit. Because I think if we uh, actually fix, I'm not seeing anything terrible. If we actually fix, fix all those trace breaks, I think this will work without, you know, worrying too much. So, that's just my thought process here. We could use an easy one after the uh, six and a half hour madness that was the other one. Alright, so there's, there's a bit more solder on here than I would like, but it doesn't seem to be hurting anything, so... We should be okay. Should. Yeah, the click drive was, was a pretty neat little device. Neat from a, a technological standpoint. I, I never used one. I never really saw them in stores. I saw them in the iOmega catalogs and thought, oh, that's a thing. But I think for originally they were like targeted as a Windows thing. So, you know, being a Mac guy, I was like, oh, I don't know. All right, so this one could definitely use some cleanup. We see some solder balls here that uh, need to go and uh, that's a lot of flux we don't need that much and I hate this stupid 
applicator that broke on me so I'm using a screwdriver with flux all around it that's gonna be fun to clean later but it's not one I use often so and look at all the green on this chip on the left my goodness ugh, ugh, ugh. so I'm just gonna try and pick up these solder balls here and there might be some under that I cannot see but we're gonna we're gonna try and just Hope that's not the case. Yeah, that one seems to be making a connection there. I really should be approaching this from the other side, but I don't have that much room here. But I think that should be okay. We will check that spot. I think that's okay. But <laughs> I did see that, Adam. <laughs> All right, so let's try and get a lot of this green stuff off. Usually, you know, to be honest, this green stuff is not going to hurt you unless it's bridging pins. And it could also weaken over time. It could weaken the structure of the pins and stuff. So it's good to get all this corrosive crap off. We'll clean this more thoroughly later on, but just getting the big chunks off here, like this. I think that'll be much better now. We do have to watch, though. We do have some by the feet, too. So we do have to clean that up. And we will test if that's uh, any problematic issues there. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Oh yes, all all these boards will either depending on. So this is this is how I I good, good question, uh, Rich. Uh, normally, yes, I would do an ultrasonic clean for every single board that comes in here. The only boards I really do tend not to is the ones that have very fragile traces or vias that I know will just be destroyed. Like the Macintosh Portable is a prime example. A lot of the time, uh, like I did with my portable, I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner to fix a problem. It caused more problems because the traces and vias on that particular model are very, very small and brittle. Uh, this one will likely go through the ultrasonic cleaner because it should not have that problem. But there's a lot of things to consider when you're cleaning these boards. Because even if you think, oh, no, it'll be fine, uh, you could run to problems. Then you're like, oh, I wish I didn't do that. So, okay. All right. So uh, we're going to get out our multimeter here because I'm going to forget to check this point because it's not really pronounced. Turn my fan off for a second. And I'm just going to see if this is a break here. Nope, that's fine. Okay, make sure this doesn't bridge. Well, let's test on a known working board. Thankfully, we have a few of these. I'm going to bring that board over here. Sometimes you will get a capacitor that does map out that it is bridged, but it's that's designed that way. And we tested out our known working board, and it's doing the same thing. So I don't have to be concerned with that. That is just how it's supposed to be. All right. So we've been going on for about 45 minutes here. I think we've been making excellent progress. Um, yeah, because it's so big, uh, I could fit this, I think, in my ultrasonic cleaner. I think. Well, we'll find out. If not, I will I will scrub it vigorously with as, as much might as I can. But... Uh, we will see. All right, let's take a look at these guys here. Yeah, uh, I'll just freshen them up a little bit. While I'm here, just give them a good old, good old clean. And the reason I'm doing this is there are some solder balls and such around this area. And by having some flux here and heating up the iron, you will usually, usually 
get a good mat a master of those on the tip of your iron and then I'm just dipping it in my coils here and that tends to get quite a few of them see there's there's just some that was just hanging around there that might have been touching ground yeah that this was ground here and yeah that, I think we have uh, something well, let's take a look here what's going on you might want to move this capacitor a little bit and this is not the ideal way to take off these caps I would not be doing this unless I was knew I was being very careful but look at look at this so this pad is gone completely gone and okay it was coming from there okay so that would have been okay it just uh, it's caught me by surprise because we have positive and that looks like ground but this is also positive and it's touching out so maybe we're fine so false alarm but it never hurts to be sure oh no I know Adam I'm not I'm not judging your work by any means please this is this program is not about judging people who do their own work or try to etc I will give you advice I will say well here's what I would suggest you do blah 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 I am not here to be like hey, you did the thing wrong because please you know how many things times I did things wrong I just don't broadcast them all the time <laughs> alright so Adam actually did a very good job of placing that cap in a particular way where it was still making the connection it should have so that's good so we're gonna emulate what Adam did here even if it looks a little silly it's not perfect it'll work so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this one here first and then we'll come back and do the back of it rear do that one just in case and that's fine that's not going to go anywhere okay moving things around on my desk okay so those two look better than they did before but as we saw, there was nothing particularly wrong with them. Now this area, I'll just move this board so I can get some better access to it. This area will need some work because we do have some missing uh, traces here. <laughs> You're welcome, Jerk. As I, I, when I opened those up upstairs, I was like, oh my goodness, I, that's so cool. I just, just the, the the colors and the the printing of it and all that fun stuff. I mean, I, I will uh, I will have to get little magnets to put them on my shelf. I'm, I'm so satisfied with them. Thank you so much for sending them. That was very kind of you. Oh, God. Yeah, this looks pretty gnarly. And uh, when I get that color quick cam working, you'll see a video on it, I'm sure. These actually seem to be making a connection, but we will we will double check this. I guess I don't know if this cap leaked or what, but it's just a lot of corrosion and junk. Now I will replace this capacitor. Uh, probably not today. Let's see how far we get. Like I said uh, at the beginning of the stream, I do have uh, an interview and some things later today, so that's why I started this stream quite early. And so uh, I will not be going the six hours or whatever I have 
to stop in about two hours. So I think we could get pretty far in that time. We might even be able to test the thing, huh? Might even be able to. We'll see. We'll see how forgiving this board wants to be. Huh? It's not about what I want. It's about what the board wants. Or the Borg, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> joke. The science fiction joke there for y'all. Um, that is all broken. And this looks fun. That is not anything major. Where is it? Is that a break? It might be. Sorry, just catching up on the chat. Hey, dude, fan, how's it going? Yeah, so the jazz drives had the same platter as a hard drive, a rigid platter, uh, similar in design to a hard drive. That's why they were a bit more affordable. Good luck, Garth. Oh my goodness, I don't like doing that because there's like 15 different billion versions of the LC power supply. Why do you scrape the traces? So there's there's uh, corrosion on them, dark colored crud on them, and if left, that will eat away at the copper, which is what the traces are made of. And so we want to scrape that away and uh, fix it up later. Oh, if I could reach something over here, I have... Look at this! PsyQuest! They go insanely digital. PsyQuest! 200 megs! I have a brand new working PsyQuest drive. And so that's, that'll make it into a video one of these days. I did shoot a video about it, and then I didn't do anything with it. Story of my life. All right, so let's continue on the, the uh, carnage here. So, these two traces have to connect to here, so I'll probably just run a wire from here to here, and then from there to there. So that I could probably fix up pretty easily. Maybe, kinda, hopefully. But let's do some continuity testing here. Uh, Adam, yes, I would. I would like. I have the only working SideQuest drive I has is the 200 meg one that I got pretty much in mint condition. I do not want to screw that up. I have one 44 meg drive that kind of works. I would love an 88 meg drive or one or two just to like have as a backup. All right, so let's let's do our continuity testing here to make sure. that all this stuff is actually going to where it should be. That we have no breaks or anything like that. So generally speaking, this doesn't look too terrible. I've seen more worse on the other board. It is 11.50 a.m. in the good old state of New Jersey. These all look okay. I mean, these, these are all cruddy looking, but... They're all making a connection, so that's good at least. Just making sure that all these lines are running through where they should. And making the connection. Now these are not. Oh wait, it is? Wow, that's still making a connection somehow. 
That's not. How is that still making a connection? Wow. Well, it might be doing that inside of the chip. I have no idea. But I'm going to run a wire anyway because I don't trust that. Can tell me why the HP Pavilion DV1000 won't turn on? Nope. Can't. Sorry. <laughs> Power supply? I, I'm not a PC guy. I apologize. Not the channel for that, sir. Sorry. Or ma'am. i not sure. It's a magic trace. Yeah, I don't, let's let's take let's just magnify. Well, there's 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 still some there. It's very thin, but it's still there. Now this one, on the other hand, is completely gone. But that was still making a connection. All right, so what we'll be doing, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I will be putting a blob of solder here just to connect that. That's a quick and easy job. Uh, and then I'll be running a wire from here to those two just to bridge that. So let's clean this up a little bit because it's all sorts of yuck. Look how much cleaner that looks. Look how pretty. This is just a Q-tip with some isopropyl alcohol. And look how nice that cleans up. Look at that. Very nice. Looks a bit nicer through here because the camera, I think, has some smudge on it or whatever. But uh, who needs traces anyway? Exactly, dysfunctional wombat. They are just an optional thing demanded by society. We do not need these traces you speak of. Quiet multimeter. Uh, <laughs> My voice is getting silly, so I'm going to drink my water. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> there we go. A bit better. I'm getting better. Yeah, that should be fine. We'll just run a little wire from those two up there over here. That will save us some trouble. But first, I would like to just uh, a wee bit of flux there. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be cheap. I'm not even gonna run a wire. I'm just gonna put a blob of solder on here, which should should do the trick. I mean, look at all that crud. Ugh. Clean that away. Sometimes the trick ain't worth the time it buys, folks. That should be alright. <clears throat> How bunnies are? Uh, bunnies are expensive. Bunnies are classed as exotic animals in the United States. Uh, bunnies can uh, just have the will to make their heart stop beating if they're extremely stressed. Uh, bunnies can live up to 14 years in their lifespans. Bunnies can go through something called GI stasis, which just stops their gut from moving. And if a rabbit doesn't eat or poop within 12 or 24 hours, you have a fatal condition on your hands. Uh, since they are classified as exotic animals in the U.S., an uh, emergency vet visit could go upwards of $1,500 to $3,500. Um, they need to be spayed or neutered. If a female rabbit is not spayed, they could 
have their risk of cancer shoot up by 85%, which is a very terrible way for a rabbit to die. Um, these are all domestic rabbit facts, not wild rabbit facts. Um, they are very picky about bonding. That could take a long time, and they will fight each other to the death if they are quite aggressive. But with that being said, they are lovely companion animals who are not easy to take care of, no matter who what says. Um, you will have to go and get them fixed unless you're smart and you go and get one from a rescue because most rescues will spay or neuter their rabbits before passing them along. Do not trust a pet store which thinks a rabbit is a boy or a girl. They are extremely hard to identify when they are under eight months of age. Extremely hard to identify those little bits. Uh, so it's very difficult to tell if a rabbit's a boy or a girl. If a rabbit is pregnant, it only takes her 30 days uh, to give birth and right after giving birth, she get all set up again for the next litter within a few minutes. Hmm. So think about that. Uh, you want to be very careful, just like with any pet that you are considering. Rabbits are lovely. They can get very bad habits if they're bored, if they don't have a friend, if they don't have constant stimulation. They will chew your wires, chew your wood, chew your house, chew everything. They are inquisitive. They are smart. Very smart. And uh, they love treats and attention and they hate being picked up most of them so um i will say that rabbits are great guys great girls great whatevers we're talking about buns uh they're they're great little animals to take care of i love them i have three of them however you have to be prepared <laughs> there's a great youtube series called how cast um that goes about uh going about rabbit care and amy sedaris from strange the candy and other silly things uh hold on I'll bring it up to link here. Uh, it's excellent, excellent how to take care of your rabbit series. I will put in the link here. There we go. And if you ever want to know anything about rabbits, watch that. Excellent. Now, I will say, rabbits have big personalities, just like dogs and cats. If you're going to think, oh, it's just a rabbit, it's just going to sit there. No, it's not. Uh, we have two rabbits that are sisters. Gussie and Olivia. Olivia is the black one I've shown on the stream. Gussie is the white one with the tan spots on the stream. Um, and uh, uh, Olivia is the sweetest bun. You could pick her up. You could kiss her. You could hug her. You could you could pet her all day in your arms. She wouldn't really mind. Gus Gus is as skittish as anything. You go and say hi to her. She'll run and hide. So <laughs> they each have their own little quirks, uh, but they are not a starter pet. And for the love of God. Anybody thinking of giving their child a rabbit or a chick or some type of animal for Easter or anything, uh, do not do that. A rabbit can live up to 14 years. It's a lifetime commitment for that animal. Uh, a child will get very disinterested very quickly when you have to clean the litter box on a weekly basis. Um, I do love those guys, but if you get them on Easter, most people who get them on Easter, they end up dumped. And then me and my friends have to spend our days trying to wrangle a three pound rabbit and making an ass out of ourselves through a busy neighborhood and uh dumped rabbits do not last more than 24 hours usually when they're dumped uh they are prey animals a, a domestic rabbit has no idea how to survive in the wild and it will get scooped up by another predator or uh, run over or something terrible like that i will not begin to tell you the heartbreaking things i have witnessed in my life trying to rescue these little guys because it will just make you want like to not believe in humanity anymore uh and i will not elaborate on that but yeah uh, they are lovely animals they are not for everybody but if you are considering getting one uh do your research and make sure that you are looking at rabbit.org it's the official house rabbit society website you do have to keep them indoors you will not be good keeping them outdoors they cannot uh, survive being out in the uh, even in a hutch outdoors foxes and rats and things will come and will hurt them or will give diseases to them uh, fly strike and bot flies are terrible infestations that could happen from insects to rabbits because if the rabbits in a pen it's very easy for a bug to implant nasty things in there and that's a very painful way for a rabbit to experience their life so if you are considering getting a rabbit you have to have an indoor spot for it and uh, that's going to be my rant about rabbits. So happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> <clears throat> oh.
Oh boy. Yes. Yes. The rabbits are lovely animals. Uh, not not good for children. If it, if you have an adult who is gonna you know take care of the rabbit and all that stuff, that's great. But uh, yeah. All right. Sorry. Just checking out something. Okay. So while I was ranting there. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, fix this so these two pins have to go here and so that's all cleaned up there and uh, that is all cleaned up there so let's get out the multimeter to check our work make sure we didn't make a fool out of ourselves while we were ranting about people huh? or things yeah what's up Jack I can't do that impression but I do it anyway this should go here, here, and not any place else. Excellent day! All right, we're good there. Okay, so this all seems to be in not too bad of a shape. I'm just going to test some continuity over here. That's actually going somewhere. Good job, Adam. That was not fun, it looks like. Some corrosion here. That'll clean off in the ultrasonic. Okay, so we're going to fix some traces here. Hey, how's it going? Still working beyond 5 p.m. My goodness. Well, let's try and entertain you, sir. Um, we have a Mac 2CX, uh, 2X here. I don't keep wanting to call it a 2CX. Um, which has some minor trace damage, but we're, we're going to fix it all up here. Adam uh, McGee sent me this board. And uh, we had to fix quite a few things. And we're going to fix quite a few more things. <laughs> but that's what we do here at Mac84. We're going to try our best to get this up and running. The donation boards from... Have the donation boards from me had their ultrasonic bath. No vintage hill shack. check. Um, I, uh, like I mentioned earlier in the stream uh, and on Twitter, uh, life is very much getting in the way right now, which interviews and stuff. I have not had a chance to do anything else, really. Uh, the only reason I'm doing this stream is because I really wanted to get at least some of the way done with this board so I could get this back to Adam and uh, I can move on to other things um, and so on and so forth because I uh, unfortunately in my current employment situation do have to concern myself with the jobs that will get a little more money in my pocket so I could do things like pay the bills which is very frustrating to have to make decisions like that but that's where I am today um, However, I'm not kicked down the street yet, so that's good. <laughs> I'll be fine, as, as long as I'm responsible and don't do stupid things. All right, so, uh, I will get to uh, doing more fun stuff with the things you sent there, uh, but uh, I cannot give you a timeline on that, because I, I am not sure myself of when I can get to that. I do have a few paying recapping jobs that I have to get to, and then I have my backlog that I'm still working through, uh, which is all while I'm trying to make one video a week, which I don't know how long I'll be able to keep doing that, but they will not, ugh, I thought I put, uh, put flux here, uh, they will uh, have their day in the sun sooner rather than later, but I just don't have a good estimate on that right now, so sorry if you were expecting that a bit sooner, but hopefully we will be able to tackle some of those soon and see the thing about those boards is i that'll be a fun project but i, I don't expect much of a good outcome from them to be honest so I, I don't want to uh you know spend six hours doing something like that where like the outcome is okay well nothing worked when i could be you know fixing a board for someone etc so. Right, so Yeah, let's scrape away a little bit there. Can't remember. Have all the boards so far had broken traces? Um, the first one... Oh, I can't remember either, Colin. Uh, the second one had terrible broken traces. Um, the first one, I think we found one or two by the startup circuit. And then I also have the regular Mac 2 that uh, my friend sent me that I have to fix up. Um, so... Yeah, it, it seems like all of these were a bit bit nasty but thank you very much Colin for stopping by and cheering us all on yeah that's it 
clean break right there. So we're going to get our little enameled wire here. I'm going to try and fix that here. And I need more flux. I need a third hand. That's right. And yes, it's a screwdriver to apply the flux. My applicator is broken. And I'm dealing with what I have. <laughs> I'm just laughing to myself because it's absurd. And sometimes all you could do is laugh at an absurd situation. He's not using tweezers. He's a madman. I'm surprised that worked. <laughs> Macintosh TV LLC. <laughs> oh, let me scroll up. I'm missing some of the chat. I apologize. Sitting here with a plastic bucket full of miscellaneous iPads and iPhones, trying to figure out if they work and if they can be reused. Well, have fun, Kai. Uh, hello, Jeremy. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I like money. <laughs> Cat assisted chat. Uh, well, good luck there, Jeremy. That sucks. Magnesh TV LLC. I uh, can't remember. Have all the boards and broken traces? Yes. Uh, did you start work on my TAM I sent you? Retro Techie, that's hilarious. Uh, would you permit me to talk about my channel here or no? Yeah, you can, you can talk about your channel. You, you won't be able to paste links because YouTube cuts them out, but if you want to promote your channel and talk, say, hey, look, I have a channel. No one's stopping you. I uh, remember the board sent to Australia. Yes. Yes. Uh, Steve, I found some money in the couch to pay for this repair work. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. I could have lunch today. No more ramen for me. All right, so we're just going to tidy this up just a little bit to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere because although I was quite lucky to have it on the first go, uh, I want to make sure that repair lasts. It doesn't just you know, go, go flying off when something else happens to it. All right, that's good. That's not going anywhere. So that's one trace fixed. And then we have to move on to this one here. I'm Italian. The amount of pasta I consume on a monthly basis is a lot. So. <laughs> There's no shortage of pasta or, or tomato sauce ever in the house. Those, those things are cheap and plentiful, thankfully. I say to myself, I need more flux. <laughs> Student bust. <laughs> yes, the, anybody who who has been in the arts or a graphics person like I have uh, knows the true meaning of starving artist. <laughs> oh, you don't think my work was worth your time, and you're just ghosting me when uh, I sent you a bill. Oh, that's cool. I guess I just won't eat this week, you know. I don't have to pay bills like anybody else or anything. I'm just an artist with an apartment and bills. <laughs> oh, fun times. 
I love the people who are like, it only took you five minutes to do. Why should I pay five hundred dollars for hundred dollars or whatever? Yeah, because it was like the the thirty years of training and and on the job experience that let me do this in fifteen minutes. Uh, that's what you're paying for. Same thing with board repair. <laughs> You're paying for my experience and my knowledge about this crap. I mean, these lovely pieces of ancient computer. All right, so let's see. Four fifty-four pounds of pasta. <laughs> I'll pay you an exposure. Sorry, we do not accept exposure here. The uh, the the police have really cracked down on people exposing themselves. Oh, words. Words are fun. How am I doing on time? Okay, I have over, uh, uh, more than over an hour, I think. Let me, let me check my calendar. Yeah, I have uh, almost two hours until that interview, so I'm good. All right, so let's take a look. It's, it's just a screener interview. It's nothing crazy. Somebody reached out to me and said, hey, I want to talk to you about this role. And I'm like, okay. Well, that's what that's going to be about. Then I have something much more strenuous later tonight. So, yeah. all right. Let's bring out the multimeters and we shall probe about a bit. Just to make sure. Ooh, that's a nasty one. See, sometimes when you just have your microscope in a weird spot, you notice things you wouldn't notice otherwise, like this guy right here, which seems to be okay. All right, that's fine. But I wouldn't have necessarily seen that. All right, so let's zoom out here because I want to be able to get a better look at everything here. People die of exposure. <laughs> Yay, kid picks. Excellent. Well done, Garth. Well done. Okay. So I think that was all the trace breaks that we identified, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go over here, make sure there wasn't anything terrible. I think we're okay there. Over here, we can double check our work. Sounds like you're making a very high pitched noise. I don't know what it is. Sorry, if you could hear that. Hopefully, you can. That should be okay. <laughs> it's not a guy of wheat. Yeah, no, it's not, unfortunately. Maybe they'll send me one. Maybe they'll be like, hey, this guy in New Jersey who complains about his multimeter, he might be a prime candidate to swoon over with a slightly better model, huh? Huh? That's just some free marketing advice, you know. I once had one uh, put in a comment... Uh, in one of my videos oh gosh it was like a year or two ago and they were like this guy uh is just too much product placement and uh uh what were they accusing me of? they were accusing me of uh um uh, trying to sell them something I, I don't i don't even know what planet they were on uh but I'm like are you kidding me nobody is nobody has ever given me a free tool or anything like i get donations from very kind people friends that I have the biggest quote unquote free thing I got was uh, Mac effects offered a the the uh, clear Mac e SE case for a review and I said I will happily do that for you because I trust you I you know have talked to you for ages I've known you for ages and uh, I trust your products and I, I would I would honestly uh, love to do that thank you for the opportunity that's really it <laughs> that's, that's the, the only time that's ever happened 
So I don't know what that guy was on about, but I mean, look, us content creators are not making uh, enough to live on. As Bruce always says, it would be much easier and cheaper to work at like a fast food restaurant. Um, you get more money for less hours that you put into stuff. So unless um, until I get to like uh, like an 8-bit guy or an LGR level, <laughs> if someone sends me a free tool, I'm going to use it. <laughs> of course, I always I like to disclose things honestly. You know, if I got something for free or anything like that. I will let you know and be like, hey, look, they provided this for me for free. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, my phone buzzed. Uh, I did get an email years ago, Kate, from them. Years ago. And unfortunately, I was not too impressed with uh, with their communication and uh, the uh, details of the offer, which I will not disclose. They weren't anything earth shattering. And the th this is this is the 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 thing I, I have to think about that when when you're doing a video with a sponsor you have to usually like do a little thing about like hey here's the sponsor blah 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 and then they usually have to approve the video depending on the, the company that requires you to have a very strict schedule and have the free time to you know share the video and have them and all that stuff. Um, but see, the thing is, 90% of those companies that you see are 90% are of the other people that are advertising on, on other YouTube channels. VPN places, uh, PCB places, um, things like uh, website builder, hosting companies, stuff like that. That is the demographic that YouTube, uh, you know, has proven to these advertisers that, you know, partnering with content creators similar in our fields... Uh, that's what works for them. So that's really all the ads you're going to get. It's not, and I have I have no problem with anybody doing that. I have a lot of creator friends who have sponsors, and look, hey, I I'd love to have a sponsor that uh, that would do stuff like that. But it has to make sense for me. It has to make sense both from a creative point of view and a financial point of view. If I'm getting let's say X amount of dollars per time I do a uh, a, a clip of that person or that company or whatever. Uh, it has to make sense for me and it has to stick with like what I'm comfortable with sharing. Uh, cause if it's a product I have no interest in, I'm not going to, I'm not going to promote it. It's just, it's not worth the, what a hundred bucks I get for the video or whatever it is. Um, now uh, that's, you know, I'm not giving specific figures cause I haven't been really approached of anything likewise of uh, uh, interesting, but, uh. yeah, it's, it's, I will say it's likely legitimate Kate, but, uh, that's, reviving some alcohol on us to get flux off this is weird um i will say the uh there's a lot of questions more than answers and that's what was sort of like huh like is this gonna be all the effort for the blah 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 and i've talked to people who have started you know down that path and then they were like no i didn't i didn't like it and i gave up it wasn't worth the trouble and i think that's sort of the boat i'm in right now um, if I get approached by someone who, let's say like I fix it or something that makes sense to me where I'm like, you know what, uh, this is mutually beneficial. I get free tools or I get, uh, paid for promoting a product that I like. I have no problem with that. Obviously I would fully disclose they're a sponsor. They're a paid promoter of the channel. It's an advertisement, but I'm not going to be hawking like diet pills or silly things like that, like that. I, no interest in that. There's no place on the channel for that sort of, sort of stuff. I don't care how much you pay me. That's not something that I would I would really consider. So anyway, uh, but yeah, uh, to each their own. I I will will I fully understand how difficult it is to do content like this. Uh, you should see the horrible comments that I get on my channel every single day that are just automatically deleted by YouTube. People being like, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. Uh, things about my appearance or the way I talk, or it's like, like I, who cares? Like, you're obviously a, a very angry 12 year old person. Like, stop yelling at people on the internet, grow up. Anyway, that's just some, some fun insight for everyone. For those of you who don't have the, uh, the pleasure of being a content creator and exposing yourself, online to everybody in the freaking world uh it has its ups and downs <laughs> the the ups are you lovely folks of the macintosh community 
Lovely, lovely people. Um, I will say that. Fantastic bunch of folks. I dare I say, I think it might be time to plug this in. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Might be time to plug this in. Just double checking all the capacitors are pointed toward the right direction because that's kind of important. You want to watch some caps explode? I don't. <laughs> Sorry, let me catch up on the chat. I was ranting for a while. Okay. Um. I'm waiting, wanting to win this iBook G4. Good luck, Jeremy. Hopefully it's not one with any graphics issues or anything like that. Ooh, Captain. The Captain tape, people? That's fine. Tell them, tell them to come my way, Garth. <laughs> I use so much of their crap product. Lovely product. Mm. <clears throat> mm. Mm. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Increase the performance of your Mac with these tantalum pills. <laughs> no worries, Adam. Very happy to help continue doing that great content. Sorry I missed your live stream the other day, but hopefully I'll be able to catch the next one. Oh, the chat just jumped down. I was I was catching up on chat. Sorry. Uh, da, 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 plug it in. Plug it in. Do it. Say plug it in. Tantalum bonfire. Anyway, Mac, I really see the blub for a clucking noodle. What? <laughs> I stole the RAM and hard drive out of it. Okay. Fifteen hundred dollars. That's silly, Adam. That's very silly. Okay, so, uh, this is going to be fun, because <laughs> where I usually have the uh, the space to test this machine with the CRT is, is filled up with IMAX. Um, we'll find out a way how to do this. All right, let's, let's clean up the, the table a bit, I guess. Get these things like my laptop out of the way. This one on the floor it doesn't need to be here right now. Our good old friend, the Performa Monitor, is making a return. my power supply because I know it works Mac Warehouse magazine anyone look at that Motorola Star Max on the cover of that uh, right under the 1999 or the uh, 1199 rather oh boy I do have a friend uh, my friend Keith who may be on the, the uh, channel <clears throat> at a uh, sooner rather than later. He used to work at Mac Warehouse here in New Jersey. They actually had an office here in New Jersey. Uh, sorry. And um, I think that'll be a lot of fun because he has some stories, man. We were just chatting a bit. And I think that would be fun for an open talk episode or something like that. MacBook Pro. This is a 2000, early 2008 model. Works great. Even though it's one with the, uh, apparently with the bad graphics chip, that one actually works fine. All right, so move this here. Okay. 
So I'm going to try and get this camcorder up here to uh, cooperate with us. So sorry for my dirty shirt cam for a moment. Oh, multimeter, you be quiet. Nobody likes a whiny multimeter. All right, so make sure this camera can remain plugged in and point it towards the general direction that we want. Let me just uh, switch over here, folks. Thank you for being patient. Um, I do not have a good way to prop this up. Poopy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll use we'll use we'll use a Newton as a as a makeshift tripod because. There we go. All right, so let's. Oops, wrong way. Wrong way. All right. So there we have it. There's the uh, board here. Let me plug everything in. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, we'll we'll get to that. No, Thomas, we're about to test it for the first time. I do want to clean off some flux here. Sorry for the accidental crotch cam. That's not on purpose. Okay, let me just get a dry Q-tip here. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, I have one of those GeForce MacBooks, decent shape. Otherwise, cool. Yes, I know the power supply you sent was working, Adam. Um, but it's located over there, and I'm too lazy to get it. Uh, Adam just recently started live streaming VHS. If you want some tips, maybe uh, you and Adam could team up. I would offer myself, but I'm going to be packed this week, so I don't think I'd be of any use. Yeah, I don't think I missed anything terrible on here, but we'll soon find out. Let me grab some batteries. <clears throat> Excuse me. Plug the power into this monitor before I forget. That power cord is for an iMac G4, so that will not work. I need a regular power cable, which there should be one here. Okay, and that's for MacBook. I can unplug that. This is a standard power cable. I could use this. Sorry, I've just talked to myself. Okay. Turn the monitor on. I need a video card. Oh, come on. Okay, so I think we're ready to do some damage here. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Let's see if it works. What do you guys think? Think it's going to work? We're about to find out. Three, two, one. All right. Well, the speaker popped. We didn't hear a chime. I don't see anything on the screen. Let's try another video card, or at least another Nuva slot. Well, I could try another video card too. No, but oh, duh! There's no memory in it. I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh gosh. 
Hold, please. And no ROM, of course. I'm sorry. I am not thinking today. I was like, that's too easy. Usually I, I spent much longer plugging things into this thing. I'm going to steal the RAM and ROM out of this. Ugh, sorry. At least it, it didn't blow up. So that's, that's the, that was a smoke test. I was testing you all. <laughs> all right. So I'm just going to steal the memory out of the other board that I fixed up for Adam. Being very mindful of these plastic clips that want to end my life and murder me. All right. Come on. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that was a rookie mistake there. Man. Boy, do I feel sheepish. And I will steal the uh, SCSI adapter here, the blue SCSI I have here. Let's put the RAM in bank A. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, so the RAM and the ROM are in there this time. <laughs> I was testing you all. And um, we have our blue SCSI plugged in. We have our batteries. And uh, let's test this out. Now do you folks think it's gonna work? Oh, I should plug, the, plug a keyboard and a mouse into it, right? Uh, there it is. <clears throat> He's just doing this for suspense. Sure, that's what I'm doing. All right, three, two, one. Flash on the screen, and we got a picture. Let's see if that cursor appears. It does. And the cursor moves. Let's see if the blue SCSI is getting power. It is. Let's see if it will boot off of the blue SCSI. And look at that. Look at that. Fantastic. Sorry that it's not the best picture here, but we're zooming in from a far away distance. There we go, system 7.1, four megs of memory. Working beautifully. <laughs> Success! Yay! <laughs> it is alive. Fantastic. <clears throat> There's a man in the window. A tiny man. <laughs> oh, this is cool. Let's get a, a bit of a closer view on this. Let me uh, zoom out. I'm going to put my hand in front of the camera lens so you will not get dizzy. All right, well, try not to. So there's our system. You can see the screen a little bit clearer there. This monitor uh, sometimes doesn't display all the colors, which is fun. Uh, probably a loose capacitor or something. But there we go. We just had a few traces to fix on that board. And now it's living the happy life. Which is excellent. Absolutely excellent. All right, so let me uh, cover the camera again so I don't give anybody a dizzy spell. Okay, I keep clicking the OBS button, it doesn't do anything. There we go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me uh, move this keyboard over here. So I could sit down and we could do some tests and junk. Sorry, Kate. <laughs> it is fixed, Jay. All right, let me get this 
situated like that. Okay, so we do have some applications on here that we could run to confirm that this machine is happy. Like Snooper. Well, usually it's not sunny when I stream, so. <laughs> I, I do have to put a, a shade there or something by that window, but what are you going to do? This is why it's a live stream and it's not a scripted video where I spend 18 hours, you know, setting everything up perfectly. You got to... My tip would be to anybody creating content, you have to set your own expectations. Come on, make the color better. Yeah. Sometimes smacking that monitor helps, but in this case it doesn't. Uh, you have to, you know, not drive yourself crazy. This is a live stream. Things are going to be a little bleh. But, you know, not that I'm trying to produce poor quality stuff. It's just like, hey, this is what it is. I'm not, I'm not going to go crazy. I'll, I would just drive myself mad doing that. All right, so let's test everything except the modem port, because that will give us an error, no doubt. And uh, let's make sure that we go. Go! Bring that board to your interview. <laughs> well, I will say, if anybody during any of my interview processes ask how I deal with defeat or <laughs> how I deal with uh, the odds being stacked against me, I'll just link to one of my six-hour live streams. <laughs> like, yeah, looks, uh, I persevered. Um, this program is called Snooper. This is version 2.0. And this application checks through a lot of hardware tests with the Macintosh to make sure that the memory, the SCSI bus, and everything is working properly. So we passed the RAM test, the PRAM test. We are now running the clock test to make sure the clock can keep time. Now it's going to do the SCSI test, which should pass because we're booted from a SCSI device. And let's scroll up because everyone wished me congratulations and I want to read them because... I often do not bask in the congratulatoriness of this thing. Uh, I hope so, Kate. <laughs> and yay, indeed. Woohoo! Success! Payday! <laughs> Woot! Nicely done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's alive! Yeah, so that's, that's always fun. Uh, oh, Garth got his LC power supply to work. Fantastic! Oh, I'm a perfectionist too, but I, I figured out a long time ago if I'm trying to be a perfectionist live, uh, that ain't going to happen. So, you, you got to you gotta do what's best for you. All right. It, all the tests pass because it's just going to go in a loop here. Fantastic. So, I call that working. So, we're going to quit Snooper. And there we go. I'm going to uh, shut down this machine. <laughs> because it worked. How about that? It's not every time you get a, uh, a stream that, you know, kind of works like after you've done the first fix. That was cool. That was cool. Uh, let me catch up on the chat here. Sorry. Uh, Defeat. I don't know the meaning of the word. I do not believe in the no-win scenarios. Wish me luck on the iMac G5 picking up Saturday. A recap is in order, I'm sure. Yes, Eric. Although I will tell you, uh, my pre-eyesight iMac G5, that was my brother's, the caps look beautiful in it. So hopefully hopefully you get, uh, you get lucky there. Yeah, it's a great program, uh, Gremlins. Uh, let's see. Don't look. Da, 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 da. Uh, depends on the Mac vintage uh, VHS. Uh, let me depends on the Mac. Uh, if if it's if it's something you just want me to like look at, that should I could probably get it here. And my problem is mailing things. As unfortunately, people know who sent me things. Uh, I'll be ready to mail something on, and that, like that trips me up. Like just finding a box, putting it in the box, packing it, putting the label on it. I have a few things that are ready to go to the mail, but, you know, people just have not confirmed their address or have to get back to me or whatever. What is next? 
on the bench SE um, 30. Uh, that I have to get the power supply for. Kai Robinson linked me to a great power supply, but it does not do the negative 5 volts that I need. It does a positive 5 volts. Uh, so finding a, a power supply for that, ugh, it's going to be fun. So which board are you choosing to keep for yourself? You pick, I assume, not board number two. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Although I spent the most time with that. Um, I didn't know I had a choice in the matter, sir. Uh, I will get back to you on that. But I'm glad to know all three work. So uh, I would prefer the one with the less trouble, selfishly. But because um, I'll probably want to put it on camera or whatever. Um, maybe the one with the most UV solder mask I have to put on, I'll, I'll do that. Um, an RT65B. I have no idea what that is. I'm going to Google it. Oh. I mean... Why not? That looks like a, a honky power supply, like a big honking type thing. Uh, 12, negative 12, 5. It doesn't say negative 5. I mean, that was just the one I clicked on, so who knows. Um, no worries, Adam, happy to help you. I'm, I'm glad we're successful. That doesn't always occur. <laughs> My SE30 has a jumpy display, which gets better after a few minutes. Analog board, recap recommendations. Main board is already recapped. Yes, I would recommend you re analog you recap the analog board if you are not too uh, worried about doing that type of work yourself. I would say it's not too bad of a job, um, but yeah. Well, Kai, then I, I think I need to have a better conversation with you about the board then. Um, because I, I assumed I need a negative five, but I, and this is a great example. You don't know what you don't know. I do not know a lot about power supplies or analog circuitry. So very smart people here in the chat. I will be talking to you guys about that. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, Kai, I will reach out to you, uh, today. I have interviews and the rest of this week is going to be jam packed full of stuff, but we could maybe chat about that this weekend. Uh, Kai, would you like me to talk about this weekend or you want me you to keep that under wraps for now? It's up to you. Um, yes, please email me VHS. That is the best way to go about it first. Um, sorry, just catching up here on the chat. Uh, yes, this is all three boards. We're all done with the three boards. Yay. We need like a family shot of them all together and happy. No worries, Jay. Thank you very much for stopping by. Good luck with your studies. Okay. 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 So I, I don't have the, um, Wait, wait, I do. Hold on one second. Hold on. Let me, let me click the thing. 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 Okay. So two things are going on this weekend. And um, the tentative date for something I'm going to mention is tentative. But let, let's talk about this. So Saturday... Uh, I'm going to be on Dan the Canadian Computer Collector's stream uh, with Bruce of Brankus Creations. We're going we're gonna to show him the ropes of soldering. Hopefully we show him correctly. Uh, so Dan the Canadian Computer Collector, excellent channel. Check that out if you are not subscribed to that yet. Um, uh, he invited me and Bruce on there. Um, that is going to be around 6 or 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, so a bit of an evening stream. Uh, but that's going to be a lot of fun. I look forward to, to showing Dan how to not burn himself with the soldering iron. It's harder than it sounds. And uh, the second thing that I would like to announce is uh, we have not confirmed an exact date, probably on Saturday or the Monday after, uh, depending on Kai's request. But Kai will be on my show doing an open talk episode where we're going to have Kai back. We're going to talk about all sorts of cool things. Um, I don't think we have the topic list confirmed 100% yet, but there's been so much since I last had Kai on. I think, oh my goodness, was that like my open talk episode number two or three or something like that, where he was just finishing up the SE reloaded board. So there's so much to catch up on with Kai. Uh, he did the classic board. He's doing all sorts of cool stuff. We have some projects that we're trying to figure out together. I want to measure some things. Uh, and, and if I could, you know, we could make a, a ROM upgrade for Mac two or something like this nearly a year ago. See time flies. Uh, but Kai is always very busy, as am I. And so it was great to try and just find time to do this together. So that will either be on Sunday or Monday. You'll see it on YouTube. I'll put out a tweet about it and all that stuff um, beforehand. But um, yes, don't worry, Kai. I'm sure we'll find out something else you have to shove in there. So no rush on that. <laughs> um, but uh, I do want to promote that. So Dan, the Canadian Computer Collector, I will be on his channel on Saturday. 
and then either Sunday or Monday, uh, depending on how better, uh, best I recover from, <laughs> from Dan's uh, insanity. Uh, on Sunday, uh, I will be hanging out with Kai Robinson, and we'll be doing a lovely, lovely open talk episode. We'll be talking about a lot of cool stuff that he's been working on, and maybe we'll be tinkering around as we do so. Um, so probably we'll be done, uh, I guess, earlier in the day, my time, to make sure Kai isn't, like, sleep-deprived. <laughs> Uh, because that would just, you know, be, be a little more kinder to him. He's my guest after all. Um, but I'll send the next stack of boards shortly. No, no, send those to Joe. <laughs> oh boy. Sorry. Let me catch up here. Uh, so Kai linked to a tweet and that tweet says it's loading. Oh, you built this out of the power supply. Okay, cool. All right. So maybe that would work out, Kai. We'll have to talk about that. Um, the power supply on the SC, I would consider that recap. Uh, you should recap that if, if you don't want to have to worry about that in the future. I haven't done one yet, but that's not to say you don't have to do it. Um, the seeing begins. Sorry. Um, electronic power supplies burn through their caps before logic boards. They tend to run hotter. That is very true. He's itching to pull me away. Have a good day. Well, thank you very much, Aaron. Take care. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so yeah, that's that's what we set up to accomplish today. <laughs> we we uh, we're messing around with that Macintosh 2X, and hey, under two hours, it's all fixed. I'm still on the lookout for a dead two CI boards and a Quadro 950 PSU or the PSU chassis. Anyway, um, I have a Quadro 950 power supply that somebody sent me to take a look at, Kai. I have not dared open that beast yet. There are some pictures online of some, someone doing a conversion for it. I don't know if that would be helpful to you or if you wanted it in person. As for a dead 2CI, I don't have a dead one. I have some problematic ones, but I don't have a dead one. Um, yeah, Getting that all-in-one off of the shelf will happen sometime, Retro Techie. I just have to plan that out. Uh, just came back from the shower. Is the board fixed? It's fixed! Happy Mac! Yay! So that's three for three. We were able to fix all three of those lovely boards. Any good recap, guys, on the iMac G5 17-inch? Unfortunately, I don't have that. I don't have a guide. I'm sure someone made one out there. If you do a search for that Eric's Edge, that, that may be out there. Um, but I, I don't think I have one, unfortunately. Only the case of the drive whale. Oh, gosh, that's stupid. Oh, that's dumb. That's dumb. Yeah, well, we could take a look at it. I, I don't, uh, I have it in the back, so we'll take a look at that on, uh, over the weekend. That'll be fun. Yeah. So, okay. So we are coming up at 1 PM here. I do have an appointment that I have to make in about, uh, 40 minutes. So I'm going to stop here and have myself some lunch. Cause I didn't even have breakfast <laughs> that I'm going to, uh, do what I have to do for the rest of the day. Um, not for more vintage Apple computers. That's nice, Adam. Um, problematic two CIs wanted. Okay, we'll talk, Kai. We'll we'll see. We'll see. I may have one from a client that they don't want it anymore. We'll, we'll talk. Um, but yeah, so uh, we, we were successful today. I'm shocked that this stream is going under two hours, but we accomplished what we set out to accomplish, so there's no reason in, in dragging this on any longer. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me in this sort of an early morning stream. Uh, to sort of get you through your day. And there you go. Adam has a 2CI. Maybe he wants to donate that to the cause. Um, but thank you very much, VHS. Uh, I am off to uh, do some life stuff and interview and all that crap. So <laughs> I uh, will be busy for the rest of the day. Uh, and probably until this weekend, until Saturday. So, um, yeah, things are going to be fun um, and busy. So if I don't respond to emails or don't respond to tweets or I... I'm sort of off the grid for a few days. Yeah, I know life stinks sometimes, but that's how it's going to be. But um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much for liking, subscribing. I do have uh, a Teespring shop with some t-shirts. You can find that at Mac84.net. You can always support me on Patreon as well. For a dollar a month, you get access to a bunch of behind the scenes stuff. Um, and yeah, that's about it. But uh, I will be uh, doing some live streams uh, this weekend on Saturday and Sunday with Dan on Dan's channel, Dan Canadian Computer Collector, and Kai will be a guest on my show either Monday or sun Sunday or Monday. But uh, oh, thank you very much, Aaron, for the super chat. Eep, 
first one of the stream. How about that? I'm glad it didn't end it so soon. Thank you very much, sir. Greatly appreciate that. And uh, yeah, so that's about it for now. Take care, guys. Uh, I did do a video on the iMac uh, that was behind me. So if you want to check that out, uh, it's on the channel and that video is doing quite well. So share it to your friends. See if they like that. But anyway, that's about it for now. Thank you so much. Take care and bye. Hit the end stream button. And bye.